Bradley Baker's check is going to be gold. <laughs> Hello guys, Axelmith the Star Wars guy here. So finally the Bad Batch is out. For the people who don't know, the Bad Batch is a series that follows the CGI Clone Wars show that originally aired in 2008. Instead of following the regular Jedi, this show decides to focus on a Bad Batch of clone troopers called Clone Force 99, after what they would call defective clones. There's Hunter, he has spidey senses, and apparently he's good at hunting too, and really good at reading the room, especially in combat. He's also the most normal looking clone trooper out of the bunch, minus the face tattoo. Wrecker, the big, dumb, strong one. Not gonna lie, this guy made me laugh a few times, but not much else there. There's Tech, the techie techie smart guy. Not much to comment on on this episode. Crosshair, the sniper of the group. He's very much the silent type, but despite his looks, he's probably the least altered clone trooper, at least in terms of original functionality. And finally, there's Echo. We would be here all day if I told you his entire story, so I'll just say he was a normal clone trooper who was kidnapped by the Separatist and turned into a cyborg. And then there's this new character to the series named Omega. I'll talk about her in a bit though. They all have different personalities and different dynamics with one another, and I can already tell we're gonna have a fun ride with the characters. It's a really good thing to do that by episode one, not thinking about the Clone Wars failure about it at all. So we start out at this icy mountain planet. It sort of reminds me of EU Alderaan, but I honestly don't remember the names of every single Star Wars planet and thing. So no. I don't remember this planet's name. We find out that Jedi Master Balaba, her Padawan Caleb Dune, and their clone commander Gree are in some sort of trouble. Clone Force 99 comes in and saves their hides, but didn't win the battle yet. They discuss what they're about to do next, and Tech says something like, nah, according to my calculations, they won't even need us to fight. Tech goes on to say, Obi-Wan has engaged General Grievous. This is when we kind of figure out that this is taking place during Revenge of the Sith. Batch 99 and Caleb are about to enter the fight again just when Commander Gree gets a call. If you know your Star Wars, you know where this is going. Execute Order 66. The clones turn on their Jedi. Caleb turns around and hurries towards his master. She tells him to run, and he has no choice but to run. Meanwhile, Hunter and the others have no idea what's going on. We get a confirmation that everything in communication is saying Order 66, but that doesn't tell our batch anything. Hunter and Crosshair go after Caleb, while he leaves Record, Tech, and Echo to find out what's going on. Hunter pleads with Caleb, but for some reason, we weren't supposed to understand, but we totally do. Crosshair keeps shooting at Caleb, making him run away more. Finally, the Jedi Padawan ignites his lightsaber and starts protecting himself. He force pushes Crosshair, knocking him out. After Hunter pleads with the Jedi once more, Caleb finally takes his leave and escapes. Crosshair asks Hunter if he carried out the order to kill the Jedi, and Hunter's all like, uh, yeah, sure, totally did. Totally did not let him get away because that order was stupidly dumb. We figure out by the mighty trio that apparently the Jedi committed treason against Chancellor Palpatine, which is met with a resounding, but that doesn't make sense at all. And I have something to comment on real quick. I know that the clones are programmed and all, but wouldn't there be anyone asking the question, just because a group of Jedi tried to kill the Chancellor? How does that make all 10,000 Jedi responsible? Comment down below what you think the answer to that would be. Anyway, so the Big Batch go back to Kamino, the homeworld of the clones. This is where we meet Omega for the first time. Now let's say her caretaker lets us know she's not important. Which translate to she'll totally be important. The 99 Quintet fight out about the programming, disagree about a certain defective clone individual about whether letting the Jedi go was a good thing or not. And then the programming is proven by Palpatine's speech in Revenge of the Sith. The Republic will be reorganized into the First Galactic Empire. And all the regular clones present cheer for their overlord. It honestly had a zombie feel to it. Not gonna lie, it was pretty unsettling. I don't know how far apart these events are supposed to be canon-wise, because the next thing we know, Grand Moff Tarkin appears on Kamino. He breaks contracts with Kamino Wins and their clone army on behalf of the Empire. I'm just gonna say it, I feel like they'd have the right to sue the Galactic Empire then. Probably wouldn't end well for them, but they are sort of being ripped off. Lama Su even says clones would be better at pretty much everything than if you just recruited people. And Tarkin says, but it'll be half the price, so it's worth it. 
That mindset sort of confuses me, but he agrees to give the clones a shot anyway. There's this training arena that Tarkin had the bad quintuple enter. Then just when they start winning, Tarkin pulls out his trump card. Set lasers from stun to, to kill. kill. This was a really intense scene, and it felt despicable and cruel. I don't know if other clones had to do the same training session, but think of if they did. Tarkin would be responsible for massacring these clones. In the end, the Bad Batch succeeds. Tarkin's all like, They did do well. But are they loyal to the Empire? Did they go through with Order 66? Apparently Caleb was seen later, so Tarkin doesn't buy anything the Kaminoans are telling him. So another test is in order. Omega lets Hunter know that she feels something is off. We as the audience feel it with her, especially if you watch The Clone Wars. It has this very eerie feeling to it. It's like the regular clones can just turn around any time and just start shooting our pentagon of quirky clones. They are tasked with going to the planet Onderon to fight off some Separatist insurgents. The BBs soon take off. Once there, we find out that the insurgents are in fact not from the book series detergent, but instead Republic recruited soldiers. Everybody seems confused, then the situation is illuminated. The Empire lied to the Bad Batch. Crosshair's all for shooting this camp of people down, but Hunter's all like, dude, what the actual hell is your problem? Crosshair retorts with, you haven't followed orders since the Jedi kid. I thought it was somewhere around here that Tech said something like, we don't follow orders in the first place, so yeah, what is your deal? And then Hunter just shoots out in the distance, and we find out that they were being watched the entire time. Unfortunately, they failed their test, though Tarkin takes an interest in Crosshair. This is also kind of where we find out who Omega is. Woo! Finally, I've been penting this up for two days now. Omega is another altered clone. She is, in fact, a female clone trooper of Jango Fett. Could be considered Boba Fett's sister. I always wondered if somebody ever thought of this, and it doesn't really bother me. In a world of hundreds of millions of clone troopers, it makes sense that one or two of them could have been altered into female. Unfortunately, we don't get to know what her, for a lack of a better term, special power is yet. Speaking of Omega, there is a side plot with her, but it feels like it was more meant to introduce us to her character than it having anything to do with the actual plot. I don't think it's inherently a bad thing, but that's why I haven't really said anything about what she's been up to. They go back for Omega and are immediately captured by the clones. I don't know what exactly their plan was to do with them. Tarkin said they had committed treason against the Empire and gave them the death sentence. Then he threw them into a jail cell with Omega. A while later, Crosshair is called upon and sent to Tarkin. Tarkin and Alice Hay talk about the inhibitor chips inside the clone troopers. If you don't remember, that's what made them turn against the Jedi. And apparently because of their heightened abilities and DNA changes the Bad Batch went through, the chip is there but it's inactive, except for the one clone who has altered the least, Crosshair. They used this machine to activate his chip fully. They also gave an excuse for Echo, which I'm glad they addressed because I had the question. And basically, He's more machine than man. It gives me the question of how much of Echo is still human. Like, does he still have a brain? Or is it a computer now? I mean, this is Star Wars. Some crazy stuff can happen. In all seriousness, they escape the jail cell. They get back to their ship. Crosshair, his armor now black, instead of the normal black and red, with a group of regular clones open fire. It goes down for a minute or two, leaving record shot for the second or third time in this episode. And Tech finally gets the ship running. They hurry aboard before the ship is shot down by their brother. I couldn't help but feel for them about this. I feel like the show kind of glossed over it. We may get into this further, I don't know. But it stated and alluded to that they're treated as freak shows by normal clones. But they are always told that they come from the same DNA and are told to act like it. Then one of their own, one of the freak shows, a person you probably shared a beer with, turns against you, man. I can imagine it's pretty heartbreaking for especially Hunter. The rest of the Bad Batch goes off to space. They mention a person's name and a favor he owes them or something, and they're off to new adventures. I really liked this episode. I don't think it's the new high when I say this is a worthy successor to the Clone Wars, and it's only episode one. Of course it can go downhill from here, but I really have confidence in this. If I had actual problems with the episode, it would be that Echo doesn't really do much. He tends to be the fish out of water, the one people have to explain stuff to. In his appearance in Season 7 of The Clone Wars, he didn't have much character either. He was just a person they rescued. I mean, he can't be the same Echo since before his roboticization. So I just hope he gets more character development as we move forward. 
The same can apply to Wrecker, honestly. I think the dumb strong one can only get them so far. But seeing him and Tech go at it about being programmed was really funny. Tech is so sassy. I also wish that Crosshair's turn was a bit more subtle. He was always fighting Hunter the first chance he gets about letting Caleb go. So by the time he does turn, it's all like, yep, knew it. I was also really surprised with how Omega turned out. I was skeptical at first because children characters can be annoying. Ahsoka Tano herself was not greeted by fans, even me with open arms because she was just that insufferable at first. But Omega managed to avoid being the annoying child character. She was definitely curious about the other altered clones such as herself. She also avoided being the OP territory. I mean, I can't say the same thing about the Bad Batch themselves. Wrecker was shot three times in this one episode. How many times does it take for a regular clone to go down? And I think not knowing her special ability yet really lent forward towards that, and it leaves room for her character to grow and to flourish, you know what I mean? I can't believe this was almost all voiced by Bradley D. Baker too. I couldn't imagine being in his shoes voicing the entire clone army like this, and talking to yourself in a booth, then replying to what you just said in a slightly altered voice. It's just amazing to me. I really like this episode. I can't wait to see what this show has in store next. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this episode, and let's have a chat. Also, if you'd like to see me do more of this sort of thing, click the bell, subscribe, comment down below. It really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. If I get 100 subs, I'm willing to do this sort of style for the prequels. So let me know if you'd even be interested in that. Until then, this has been Axelmyth the Star Wars Guy, and I'll see y'all in the next video.